Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with another very cool figure. Somehow, this is a figure that I never acquired and I never reviewed, and in fact, I almost completely forgot existed until just like a few weeks ago. This is the Mojo Fun Deodon. I have never reviewed this figure. I do not have it in my collection, but I am super excited to now have it in my collection, thanks to Happy Hen Toys, because I was scrolling through their site, noticed that this was on there, and thought, wait a minute, I don't think I have that. And in fact, I don't know that I've ever even seen it before. So I now have it here again, thanks to Happy Hen Toys. So uh, definitely happy to have this one because it would have been a shame had I missed out on it. I love prehistoric mammals and uh, the Day of Dawn is definitely one of the coolest prehistoric mammals to have existed and definitely a very cool looking figure that they have here. So without further ado, we're going to jump to a closer look and we'll check it out from there. So starting up here at the head sculpt of the Day of Dawn, you can see again, it looks pretty darn nice. They've definitely applied some decent looking fur detail and everything, as well as some nice looking paintwork. We don't have a whole lot as far as variation of color for something like this, but honestly, I wouldn't really expect that. We've basically got some nice variations of browns throughout, as well as some blacks that show up. Basically around the mouth is where you see the blacks, but you do see a little bit of it kind of airbrushed up here on the top of the head. Really smooth transitioning, which looks quite nice. You can see the eyes are painted with a black. They also have a gloss coat, so they shine quite realistically. You can see the same for the nose. Also has a nice gloss coat to it. Also, again, painted with a black. The mouth is sculpted in an open position. We can see the teeth. The teeth look pretty decent for the most part. They do have a bit of a rounded look to them, uh, which isn't the greatest in the world. But considering this is a figure that... You know, I'm sure is picked up by children. It's definitely a figure for all ages. I can understand why they would have to curve the teeth and everything like that to kind of make them a little bit more, you know, kid friendly when it comes to something they may play with. You know, they don't want people to hurt each other. But you can see the inside of the mouth sports a nice pinkish tone. You've got the tongue sculpted in there. Eh, not really much in the way of detail on the upper side of the inside of the mouth, so it's pretty bare bones on the inside, but we do have a tongue sculpted out. The teeth are painted with a white, and my camera's not focusing, there you go, you can't see painted with a white. And again, you have like a black that sort of runs through the inside of the mouth, and then they've painted the white teeth over that, so you can kind of see the black creeping through a few different areas there of the teeth. But overall, I think it looks okay, a little sloppy as far as the paintwork of the teeth goes, but not too bad. As you move up here further into the head, you can see the brown lightens up a little bit as we move back. Again, the fur detail looks pretty nice. As you move up, you do have a nice little area of fur, kind of scruffier fur up here on the top of the animal that moves down along the back. And they have applied some nice variation to the color in that area as well. As you can see, dark browns and blacks kind of mixing within the fur up there. And the sculpting of that fur looks pretty nice. It's got a very wavy look to it again it doesn't look generic or anything looks pretty lifelike as you move back into the neck you can see some tensing in the neck which also looks really good you can also see the ears and the ears also have again that brown that taper off to a darker brown so a nice variation of color even in the ears they really have put a lot of work into the uh, paintwork of this one and as you move back you can also see that they've taken like a gray and uh, dry brushed it looks like a lot of the fur detail out so again on top of giving it more variation of color they've also highlighted a lot of the fur detail very realistically as you move back you can see how both legs are kind of outstretched it maybe looks like it uh, kind of looks like it's in the midst of a confrontation because it looks very confrontational just with the way that the front legs are posed and uh, again, with the fact that they're just so straight out and tensing, you can see the muscles tensing and everything as you move down through the course of the leg. It makes me feel like it's definitely uh, maybe face to face with another day of dawn. Maybe it's having an issue with that one. And uh, maybe they are just a little unhappy with each other because it looks like it's preparing to fight or show off a defensive display to the other one that's just kind of my take on it but as you move down the legs again the same paintwork moving down you can see the fur becomes a little bit finer as you move down into the foot and then you've got a black down there in the hooves of our day of dawn but as you move back up you can see again some nice uh, shadowing that they've applied here some nice black tones that they've applied through uh, those two areas and again the stomach you can see a little bit of girth too it looks all right 
Again, giving it a pretty well-fed look. As you move back, you can continue to see the spinal column. Even after that fur wears off, you now see the spinal column, and you can see the hip bone as well. Again, the musculature of the rear leg. As you move down, not quite as tensed as you see back here. Kind of a little bit crouched, making it look like maybe it's preparing to lunge. But again, the same type of fur detail and everything as you move down, same paintwork down there. In the feet, as you move back here into the tail, you can see the tail sculpted pretty nicely. You can see it lead down and again end in a nice blackish tone there with a little bit of fur out there at the end, a little extra fur. You can also see that we have the genitalia up there as well. So Mojo did a pretty good job of making sure it looks nice and anatomically correct. But then when you look at the opposing side, again, it looks pretty much the same over here. The only difference would be the positioning of the legs and the fact that it looks like it maybe has its head ever so slightly turned toward its right, but not much at all. But overall, it looks pretty much the same on both sides. So definitely a very cool figure of a very underappreciated species in figure form. We don't get very many of these. As far as a size goes, for a length from the snout to the tail, about 5 inches or a little over 12 and a half centimeters. And then for a height to the back of the shoulder area you are looking at about two and three quarter inches or a little over seven centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus robert muldoon and the collect a human being next to our mojo fun day done and you can see the figure as a whole is pretty small i mean it's not tiny by any means but it's definitely not a large figure and uh, I think you can see next to the Colovasaurus that if you are a Mattel collector it's very clearly you know I would say roughly in like the attack pack danger pack size range maybe slightly smaller then for some completely random comparisons, we have the Collect Day Deluxe Dimetrodon next to the Deodon. We've also got the Safari LTD Utyrannus, again a little bit bigger than our Deodon. And the Schleich Diabloceratops, which very clearly is extremely similar in size. And then we also have a Mattel Velociraptor showing you that as far as like the bipedal danger packs go, it's a little bit bigger. And here we have a comparison with the Papo Smilodon. Now I do actually have two other figures of this species, one from Safari LTD, one from Collect Day. However, I'm currently in the process of revamping everything in my dinosaur room. So stuff is kind of like all over the place as I'm packing things up and everything. So finding those two figures right now would be an absolute nightmare. So I'm not going to compare with those, but I figured I would bring in just a few other prehistoric mammals here to help us as far as comparisons go, one of which being this Smilodon. We've got the Invicta Woolly Mammoth, which you can see is kind of similar in size, just a little bit shorter. And then the very popular... TNG Woolly Mammoth, which you can see is a little bit bigger than our Deodon. So this Mojo Fun Deodon figure is definitely really fun, and I would say it's probably one of their best prehistoric mammals that they have released outside of like the Woolly Rhino and Woolly Mammoth, and maybe their Smilodon might be up there in the same, you know area as far as this one goes when it comes to how good it is but i would say this is absolutely near the top of their list and they do have quite a few prehistoric mammals out but it seems like they do a pretty good job for the most part you know some of their older ones when you go back and look at their dinatherium and brontotherium and stuff they're not the greatest prehistoric mammals at the time i was probably head over heels for them because there just weren't that many prehistoric mammal models out but now, when you look back, you know, they're not as amazing, still really nice, but not as amazing as, you know, you see with many other companies. But this one, I feel like, still looks really good. You know, they've done a great job on the sculpt, great job on the fine detail of the figure. They've also done a very good job as far as the paint apps. They've applied a lot of color to it. It's, for the most part, pretty precise, pretty uh carefully painted you know the only area that really shows sloppiness i would say would be the teeth there's definitely some sloppiness you know room for improvement there but they seem like they've really improved over the last few years and this figure was released quite a ways back the underside i believe states 2013 so you know it's definitely been out for a while so again very impressive considering the time that this one was made and i feel like mojo didn't really hit their stride of improving drastically until the last few years so 
pretty impressed with this one. Definitely another very cool Mojo Fun figure, and I'm really happy that I didn't end up missing it, and I was able to grab it before they decide to retire it or something at some point. So if you are interested in grabbing one and adding it to your collection, I will include a link in the description to where you can do that again on Happy Hen Toys, which is exactly where I purchased mine. So make sure you check that link, go grab this very nice figure, and like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.